Welcome to Archery Talk 101 podcast, your guide to better archery skills. We'll bring you the latest tips, tricks, and expert advice, but that's not all. We'll also have interviews with top archers and industry professionals and reviews of the latest gear and equipment and much more. How do I correctly shoot my bow? Hi, my name is Roy Canterbury, your host today on Archer Talk 101, and we're going to go over a few things on, on how to shoot your bow. I've been teaching archery for quite a few years now and also teaching martial arts, and I've kind of combined them, and I've got some videos I created. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to share my screen, and we'll let you take a look at uh, some of the videos I've put together. And we'll go ahead and start this video. You should be able to see my video here. I'm going to go and let this play, and I talk about how to... Uh, align your feet to your target. This video is going to tell you how the proper foot placement. So what we're going to do is we're going to take an arrow, put it on the floor so you can have a little line. So this arrow is going to point straight to your target. Now you'll see a lot of, some people come in and try and do an open or they come in. No, you want to put this toe, this toe points towards your target. So now you have a nice straight line. You're all in a straight line to your target. Okay, now, I teach that way for a couple different reasons. Now, one of the things you have to realize with that type of a stance, if your grip is not correct or your draw length's too long, you will hit your arm. It's just, you're going to hit your arm if you don't do it right. Uh, so that's one of the things, the disadvantage of doing it that way. The advantage of it is you have great uh, distance to your you know, direction right to your target. You're going right to your target instead of going off at a little bit of an angle. And, and that's one of the things that we want to look at is, you know, making most efficient with uh, your, your shooting. So I have a known where I'm going to go over the uh, proper way to put the bow in your hand. Because like I said, if you don't have the grip correct, you're going to hit your arm. And by using the correct grip, then you don't have to worry about hitting your arm so let's go ahead and we'll share that one and let's go and get that video started. Okay, today we're going to go over how to, how to hold the bow. So to start with, you're going to have the bow is going to go through your hand in this position right here. Okay, now what I'm describing there for those uh, listening to the audio is uh, you've got a spot, you're basically your lifeline, which kind of goes, starts off between your thumb and index finger um, below the the knuckle on the index finger and goes down to the palm of your hand between the two meaty parts for your little finger and your uh, thumb. So in that spot in between there is where we're going to put all your pressure and, and that's where you're going to go. And I, I tell people when I first start, I ask them uh, if they've had any martial arts experience and those that have, uh, they know heel palm strike and they know exactly which part of the hand I'm talking about hitting with. You're going to be pushing with this part of the hand as you're pushing the bow. You're going to be pushing with that. This hand's completely relaxed. You're going to push away. So now we're going to grab the bow. You want to use a sling. Always have a sling, but you don't want it tight against your hand. You want to just keep it so it will hold the bow. Now you're going to have your bow. Is going to, you want it so it balances in your hand. And now you're going to put the bow in this grip. I like to take... And put a little pressure on it before I draw and drop this hand down. Yeah, what I'm talking about here for those that are listening is I'll take with that top part in between the index finger and the thumb, and I kind of open my hand up and let it relax around the riser, and then just tilt my wrist down until I hit that, that nice point where all the pressure is, is on your hand transfers all the way through to your shoulder. So it's going to see how it goes through that part of the hand. And now as you get ready to draw, you're going to be pushing this hand forward as you draw back. Okay, and that, that's a little, little description. And for those that get to watch this on a video, which is either on my YouTube channel, Learn to Fix It Yourself, you can find the, uh, the playlist for, for the podcast. Or if those that are in the Arch Talk 101 Facebook group, they get to watch the videos while we're recording them and they can they can uh, comment on them there and you can always comment on on any of the other places as well so that's the way you're going to hold the bow and and what we want to do now is i'm going to talk about releases you know the correct way to use them 
there's basically, you know, just a few types. Either there's the wrist type or the hand type is basically what you're going to have. And then in the, the wrist type, there is different options there. The handhelds, there's different options in there. So I'm going to go over a little bit on how to use each one of the different styles and why I like certain ones over other ones. Uh, there is a lot of different options for you. You just got to find what works for you. Don't be afraid to spend some money on a release because that's where you're you're going to get all of your uh, control on releasing the arrow. We're going to start off with a caliper type one, which the jaws just open up. Now, these are called a wrist release. They don't go on the hand. A lot of people will put them on the hand and start pulling with the hand. And as you're pulling, you're going to see that as you pull, pull from here, just take your hands like this and try and pull, and you're going to feel separation in the wrist right here. So you're pulling on the hand here. If it's back here, you can pull with your back muscles much easier. So you want to put the strap on so it goes around. Now this is the Velcro one, and you'll see why I don't really like the Velcro ones when you get ready to draw. They're a little bit noisier. See, it's up on your wrist. I don't know if you can hear that or not, but that Velcro is tightening up and making a noise. So if you get ready to draw your bow, you're going to draw back and you're going to have that noise. Now what you're going to do is you want this trigger to be fairly short. When you get ready to draw, put your finger behind it. Because what will happen is as you get ready to draw, if your hand is in front of it and you make a fist, you will fire it. And as you're drawing back and it goes off prematurely, you're going to smack yourself in the mouth. So you always want to have it short. So now, when you get ready to hook it up, you have to look down at it, and now you're going to start drawing. Now, because I don't have an arrow in here, I'm not going to draw it back. So I'm going to put my hand on here, and that's how I'm going to start my draw. So that's how you use one of these type. Now, you, you've got the pros and cons. If you have this out firing at the tip of the finger, you're, you're going to have a tendency to want to pull the trigger. That'll cause tar target panic. So now, let's go with a different style one. This one here has a hook on it. I prefer those. Has has the little hook on it like this. You pull the trigger, it just opens up instead of the jaws opening up. So now you're going to put this on. It takes a while sometimes to get the hang of putting these things on. You're going to put this on, and you want it there again around your wrist. There's a little spot right here that holds it. So now you're pulling. You pull from the, your back muscles. Now, this one here, nice thing about this one is when you have your bow, I don't have to look at it to hook it up. I can find the loop, and I can hook it up. Now, there again, you don't want your finger in front, because if you have your finger in front, make a fist. It's going to release on you. So that's why if your finger's behind, you're not going to be apt to pull the trigger and smack yourself in the mouth. Now, on to another type. It's one that you hold in your hand. They call them a thumb release because everybody likes to do them wrong and just pull the trigger this way. That's worse than using your index finger because there's less dexterity in the thumb. The way these are supposed to be used is, now this one has jaws like the, uh, uh, the first one I showed you. You're going to hook it on here. Nice thing about these is you can leave them hanging on the bow. You're going to grab it when you pull it back. You want that trigger back here on your thumb, not here. Not out here, back here. Because now as you pull, it will release. So back here, as you come back, and you're going to release by just rolling your hand, using your back muscles to pull that back. Okay, see how that works? Now, this one has a lot of movement in that trigger. See how much movement that is before that jaws open up? When you feel that, when you're shooting with back tension, you're going to feel that. Now, let's look at this one. This is a, a, a chocolate addiction. Carter, see how much that moves? Almost can't tell it's moving. So this one here, 
you're going to hook around here like this. And when you're out hunting, you just come down, you have, you know, where the release is. Now, these aren't really beginner releases, so you still want to put your finger here. But I can take my thumb and I can put all the pressure I want on this part of it. Now, this part that I'm talking about there is the very tip where your, your, your pad on your thumb is. You can put pressure on there and you're still not going to squeeze on the trigger. And it won't fire because it's back here. So as you're pulling, it's going to come off. Now, if you notice, as I get ready to fire this, how much movement is in my hand? Almost none. So that's how to use the release. Yeah. So that's quite a bit of information here to, to work through. So you just want to take a look at, you know, what type of release. You know, I say the uh, there's another type that I don't have. That's actually a, a back tension release where there is no trigger at all. Uh, those are even harder to 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 work out because those, as you're drawing them back, you actually have to tilt them forward, like your little finger points forward as you draw them back, because the process of pulling them, it, actually that little finger actually is is coming back, and that will just break that hinge open. There is no safety on those. Uh, the same thing with the, the one I was using here is you got to keep your thumb off that trigger because you put your thumb on that trigger as you're pulling back, put a little strain on it, it can fire. Uh, where the, the trigger type ones, you're, you're going to have uh, your finger behind it so you can't accidentally pull the trigger. So that's the basic uh, three or actually two styles, but the, the calipers and the wrist strap is... Uh, uh, you know, I'm not as fond of those because you can't just hook those up as easily without looking at them. And while I'm hunting, I don't want to look down at my bow, hook my release up and look back up. I want to be able to find the loop or find a release while I'm still looking at the animal because if they're moving, uh, you don't want to be looking somewhere else because too many times you go look somewhere else, look back, and they're looking at you, caught your movement. So that's one of the things that, uh, you know, I think about when I'm out there, as well as the Velcro. Uh, the Velcro, some of them are better than others, but I've had Velcro where the whole, the whole Velcro lost grip. Uh, but can you imagine completely no sound? And now you know how much noise I was making putting that wrist strap on with that Velcro on there. And, you know, that's a lot of noise out in the forest that you wouldn't really want. Now, for those that are going to use a wrist strap, make sure it's on your wrist, like you wear your watch. Uh, you wire your watch past those little little bones at the end of the arm. Uh, you wear it past there, not on your hand. Now, one of the things that you can do to kind of see the difference of where they get, grab onto your hand below where it bends, not up on, on the arm part, but on the hand part. And now put them in front of you and pull, pull them apart and feel where the strain is. You're going to feel pressure in the elbow. Now reach forward a little bit, grab around your wrist, now pull. You don't feel as much pressure in your wrist. It works really good if you have somebody helping you because uh, they're like you're drawn and, and just hold the different parts you can see because you can, as you're feeling holding onto the hand, it's wanting to separate your wrist a little bit. Uh, so that's some of the things to look at. And remember, do not pull the trigger. Uh, we'll go through pro shot process a little bit later, but that's what I want to cover is, is these things in, in this podcast. Um, if you have any questions, uh, get a hold of me either you know through the comments uh, or you can get a hold of me through my YouTube channel, Learn to Fix It Yourself. You can get a hold of me through the Arch Talk 101 uh, Facebook group. And just uh, have any questions, just ask us. We'll be glad to help. Once again, my name is Roy Canterbury. I'm your host today on Archstock 101.